Hi everyone, Anthony here with Samsung Digital Imaging and today I'm going to show you how to use tethered shooting with your NX1. First things first, and you'll need to download and install the Samsung Remote Studio. This piece of software can be found in the iLauncher interface when you plug in your NX1 to your PC. If you don't have iLauncher installed, just follow the link in the description below and watch our video on how to install it. Once installed, you'll want to set up your NX1. Press the menu button and scroll down to general settings. Now find USB connection and press OK. From here you'll want to select Remote Access. This will allow your NX1 to talk to the Samsung Remote Studio software on your PC. Keep in mind when you're done using the Remote Studio, you'll want to switch it back to mass storage. Now connect your NX1 to your PC and make sure it is turned to the ON position. Open up the Samsung Remote Studio. The Remote Studio will automatically recognize the camera and will show a live view of your subject. Let's take a look at a few of the options that are available. You'll notice right away that all of your basic camera functions are available immediately. Up on the top left of the screen, you'll see a digital readout of your current settings. Up here, you can see which mode you're in, the autofocus type, metering, quality, battery, white balance, ISO, the number of images available, shutter speed, aperture, and exposure value. To the right, you have two buttons, which are your shutter and record button for video. Below, you'll notice four distinct menus. The first two menus are for your camera settings. Here you can adjust all of your basic camera settings as well as set up the inner velometer and even external flash groups as well. The next menu is called Movie and here you can adjust the movie size, quality speed, and mic levels. Lastly is the Settings menu. On this menu you can adjust the power save settings on the camera, the date and time, as well as format your card and reset your settings. On the top of the screen, above your live image, you'll see Live View and Playback. Live view shows what your camera sees and playback will allow you to view the images you've already captured. To the far top left of the screen you'll notice a gear. Clicking on this gear opens up your file saving options and save settings. We'll go through these in just a minute. Further below you have information tab that tells you the version of the Samsung Remote Studio and below that you have your help tab. The help tab takes you to the PDF manual for the Samsung Remote Studio for easy referencing. So now I'll take you through a real basic scenario while using Lightroom to auto import my images. First I want to set up my folder where I want the remote studio to send my images. So I'll click on the gear and select save folder settings. From here I can create the name of the folder and where I want the images to go. If there are already images in that folder I can also create a subfolder as well. In this case this is a completely brand new folder so it's already empty. What's great about doing this early on is that every time I open up the Remote Studio, this will be the default folder my images will go to. Once I have my folder set, I can decide whether or not I want to modify the image names. For sake of the demonstration, I'll name them Test123. Now all my images will have Test123 in front of them. This is great especially if you're capturing images of a particular model, object. It helps you keep track of everything and what you're photographing. Now that my file and folders are set, I need to prepare Lightroom to receive my images. You'll notice Lightroom is open on my computer. I'll need to tell Lightroom where my images will be loading so it can import them accordingly. First up, I'll go to File, then Auto Import. Then I'll select Auto Import Settings. From here, I can tell Lightroom where to find images I'll be capturing and set it to Auto Import. When the Auto Import box opens up, select Enable Auto Import. Then below, select the Watched folder. This folder in particular is called Samsung Remote Studio. Then select the destination folder where you would like those images to go. From there you can change file name, information, automatic develop settings, metadata, keywords, and initial previews. For the sake of the demonstration, we'll leave everything as is. Once you have all your settings, press OK. You can either choose to minimize Lightroom or move it off to the side if you have a large monitor or even dual monitors. Now I'll connect my NX1 to my PC and turn it on, and then open up the Samsung Remote Studio. I'm all set up to capture images now, so I'm actually going to go ahead and ask my buddy Laurent to come on in here and sit for us. And um, I'm going to go on ahead and start adjusting my settings. And since I'm photographing Laurent, I really, um, you know, he's, he's not moving. I don't need a fast, super fast shutter speed, um, but I'm going to set it to 1 200th. Set the ISO to 200 and the aperture to 2.8. I'll double check my white balances, my pixel size and quality, metering, etc. Then just simply click on the screen with my mouse where I want the focus point and press the shutter button. I'll take a few more images just to show you how this populates in Lightroom.
Now take a look and you'll notice that my images automatically are imported into Lightroom. Samsung Remote Studio is a great tool for the professional looking to expedite his or her workflow. So be sure to download it if you're looking for an easy way to control your camera from your PC. Also keep an eye out for future updates with both the Samsung Remote Studio and NX1 through the Samsung iLauncher software included with your camera. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any further suggestions or videos or questions on the video that you just saw, just leave them in the comments section below. This has been Anthony with Samsung Digital Imaging. Thanks for watching.